At this point, Bullseye is starting to look great, but we still need to add some styling to the buttons and the slider. This is the last thing we need to do to wrap up with the styling of the app, so let's get right to it. All right, so we're back in Bullseye, and we want to start styling the button. So here we are. We're looking at the Hit Me button right here. There's a calling a method on it to present an alert. Right after that, we're going to chain this, and we're going to call set the background. And we already know how to set the background. We've done this once before. So you just do dot background image, and we're going to put the image button in there. And we're just going to accept the default alignment. So you can see here that uh, it now has that background image there. And while we're at it, let's add a shadow to it, calling our shadow modifier from earlier. And now that we've done this for one button, it's really easy to repeat it for the other buttons. Let me move this up so we can see it. And I'm going to scroll down. So here's the first button. So at the end of that, I'm just going to apply that. And here's the second button for the info. And I'm going to scroll it down and apply that. Now, again, you may wonder, oh, no, the buttons are getting cut off. But if I run this in the simulator, you can see that there's some space in the edges, so it's not actually cut off, and it looks pretty good. So we're good there. OK, so the text inside these buttons doesn't look too good, right? Because it's blue, and it just doesn't look right with the button. So we're going to create a style for the text inside the buttons. So we'll just take one of these existing styles and use it as a starting point. And we'll call this one button large text style. And this one is going to be arrow rounded empty bold, but we'll make the size 18. And the foreground color inside the button that we want is black. And we don't want um, a shadow inside the button, so we'll just leave that the way it is. And then we'll make a modified version of this called button small text style. That's the same thing, but the size is going to be 12 instead. OK, so now we just need to apply the right modifiers to each button. So if we go down to the hit me, the modifier we want is the button large text style. And we'll copy that. We'll go down to the other text buttons here. And we'll make this the small text style. And for the other button text, we'll also make that the small text style. So go ahead and resume. All right, so now we have text inside the buttons. All right, now there's one more thing. We actually have, if we look at our asset catalog, some images to use for these buttons. This one is meant to be for the info button, and this one's meant to be for the start over button. So what we kind of like to happen, let me resume this, is for the icon to be the left of the text, just to make it look a little bit nicer and more intuitive about what that button does. So it turns out that you can put anything you want inside a button, not just text. So right now we have some text that's start over, but instead we can use an H stack that has text, but also before the text, we can put an image with start over icon. And check it out, there's our icon. And we can repeat the same idea here down for the info button. Can make a H stack. And inside we can put an image for the info icon. Our buttons are looking good, but you might have noticed something interesting. In our asset catalog, the images we provided for the info icon and the start over icon were black. Yet, when we run Bullseye, they're now blue. Why might this be happening? Here's a hint. Take a look at the color of the slider in our app. Do you notice any similarities? It turns out that iOS subtly applies a certain color called the accent color to all user interface elements across your app, like icons, the slider color, the default text color, and so on. The default accent color is the light blue that you see here. The good news is you can override this accent color to any color you want. And even better, if you set the accent color on a view, it also sets the accent color on any views contained inside it. So it's pretty easy to change the look of your interface quickly. Let's give this a try. All right, let's start by setting the accent color on the slider. So let's see, I'm going to find the slider row. Here it is. And here we're going to call accent color green. You can see it now has a nice green tint to it. 
Now let's say for these particular icons, we have a particular color in mind. So maybe our designer comes to us, or maybe we load up Photoshop and we know maybe the, the hex value of a color we want to use. So let's say you go in Photoshop and you want to use 003366. If you search for that in Google, Google has this really cool color picker that's built right into Google. And it lets you see the hex value of the number, the RGB values of the number, and you can even move the values around and pick it like exactly the color you want and you get all the values you need. But we do want this particular value, so let me go back to that. So you can see here that the RGB values are 0 and 51 and 102. Now when you're working with colors in Swift, it wants the color values in the range of 0 to 1 that are RGB values. So that's easy. You can just divide each of these values by 255 and you then get it within the range of 0 to 1. So anyway, um, this is just an easy way to get colors in Swift. So if I go back to our code here, we can now scroll to the top of the file and we're going to create a, a, a constant to store our color. Now this is not a state variable. So when the, if this value were to ever change, or not that it would, but if it were to ever change, we don't need to update the view at all. So I'm not going to put at state beforehand. Instead, I'm just going to do let midnight blue equals color. And color has an initializer that takes RGB values. They're just four doubles. And so for the first one, we put 0, 0.0 divided by 255.0. For green, it was 51. Oops, this was one too many to fives. For the final one, it's 102.0 divided by 255.0. And now that we've defined this color, we're going to apply it to the entire V stack so that unless it's overwritten, it defaults to using that. So if we do accent color, midnight blue, and resume the automatic updating. You can see here that the icons are now a darker blue that looks a little bit better with those particular buttons.